that drives the NBA's global workforce strategy built on a commitment to attracting, retaining, developing, and engaging top talent for the NBA, WNBA, NBA G League, and NBA 2K League. With a focus on people, culture, and innovation, Eric is responsible for leading global projects, processes, and analytics that address business needs. His partners with the league's, I'm sorry, he partners with the league's senior leadership to enable, empower, and develop employees in 13 U.S. and international offices. Outside of the NBA, Eric is a motivational speaker and created a career development training program, Say Yes to Success. Please welcome, a very warm welcome please, to the EVP and CHRO for the NBA, Eric Hutcherson. How about the energy in this building? Welcome, welcome. Thank you guys very much. Um, game time. Uh, I, thank you for the open, by the way. That was really helpful. That was great. You know, wasn't expecting that, but that was a good, nice open. Um, I always start with the beauty of our game. Um, whenever I speak, I want to make sure that everybody knows why I do what I do. That's it right there, right? First game of the season tomorrow. You can see some of the statistics of the NBA. You can see the power of the league. You can see the global reach of the league. You can see the level of inspiration that the league has. But when the day is done, it's a beautiful game. It's a game that inspires people all around the world. It's a game that makes people feel like they can be something bigger than just themselves. It's something that gives them that sense that there's hope, there's passion, there's something other than just me every day waking up and going and doing the mundane thing that I do. I have this thing that I can look forward to. And that's the thing that we cherish most is our game. So as I come to talk to you, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this notion of being something bigger than just yourself. Um, when I started thinking about this conversation today, I tried to find a quote that really sort of resonated with me. And Jeff Bezos has this quote that I now use a lot. Um, Day two is stasis, followed by irrelevance, followed by excruciating painful decline, followed by death. And that's why it is always day one. Now here's what's interesting about that quote. Bezos actually, his office is in a building called Day One. And when they've remodeled their campus, they built another building and it's called Day One because that's now where he sits. Um, here's what he means by Day One. Are you making every day better than it was the day before? What are you doing to be better than you were? When you think about our players, the reason LeBron is LeBron is because he scores 30 and has 15 rebounds and has nine assists. And then the next day he goes in the gym and says, what did I do wrong to not get 10 assists? So if you think about it in the context of how you run your lives, how you work your work every day, what are you doing every day to make today better than it was yesterday? Because day two is what it is. And so how do you make it always day one? How do you make it so you're always innovating? How do you make it so you're always getting better? How do you make it so you're always thinking about what's that next thing that I can do to turn the corner, to move the needle, to make the place better than it was before? And what's my personal impact to that? That's what he means when he says it's always day one. I wanna show you a video because this video really encapsulates 
the innovation in the history and the change of the NBA. The NBA has evolved over time. And what you'll see in this video is an opportunity to get a sense of what the history used to look like, but what today looks like, and how today is just an evolution of yesterday. You earned the right to be here. You earned the right to play in this game. What game was so much on the line? Welcome, everyone. Will tonight be the very night that fans have spent decades dreaming about? Our history shapes our future. Our players from years ago, the small guy was the point guard. Today, point guards are seven foot tall. There was no such thing as a wing in the old days. Now, everybody's a wing. You wouldn't have a seven foot tall guy shooting jump shots back in the day, but now that's norm. You don't even have positions today. And if you think about how our workplace has evolved, our workplace has evolved just the same. We've got skills that we bring to the table. We bring those skills. We do our work. I'm not exactly sure what I am. Am I an HR guy? I didn't really know what an HR guy was until I became one. I got a master's degree in sports management. I was a sports agent. I did player appearances. I did player contracts. I did footwear deals. I'm a marketing guy. I fell into HR and realized, hey, wait a minute. I can actually have more impact in this seat than I ever could have had in any of those other seats. I realized that our league is not just a sports league. We're actually a social icon. We're so much more than a sports league. Wait a minute, the NBA isn't just the game. The NBA for some people is a destination. The NBA for some people is inspiration. The NBA for some people is aspiration. The NBA is a cultural icon for so many people in the world we can actually move the world. So then I started thinking, so then what's my job? I'm not just the head of HR. I'm responsible for the future of the game. And in being responsible for the future of the game, I can actually move the needle. I might be able to change the world from the seat I sit in. Never mind the fact that I used to play with a bunch of guys that played in the NBA and I'm the only one who's still in the NBA. But <laughs> that was my justification for why I wasn't good enough to play, by the way. Um, but here's the deal. This is what I say to our team. Every company has to have a reason to exist. What's that higher purpose? What's that reason that you're there? It's not the job. It's not the title. It's not the salary. It's not how big your office is. It's not the address. It's not the name of the company. It's not how big the brand is. It's not what you sell. It's not what you buy. I'm telling you guys, it is something bigger than that. It's got to be something bigger than that. Because if it isn't something bigger than that, then you're just going to be a hamster on a wheel. You're going to go to work every day. You're going to do your thing. You're going to go home. You're going to go to work every day. You're going to do your thing. You're going to go home. And that's also the engagement that you're going to have from your team. That's also the commitment that you're going to get from your folks. What you've got to do is you've got to say, what is that bigger purpose? What are we here for? Why are we doing what we're doing? And how do we make it something that everybody can plug into? I'm at the NBA. I recognize being at the NBA gives me a built-in value proposition. 
It allows me to say that we're here to shape the world. It allows me to say we build bridges through basketball. It allows me to say that there's young people all over the world that will never go to a live game, but they're still inspired by our players. They're still inspired by our game. I recognize that more people want to know what LeBron thinks about politics than what politicians think about politics. I know that we shape fashion. I know that we shape music. I know that we shape all these other things. But by the way, your companies do the same. Each one of you do the same. In some circle that you roll in, people are looking at you going, so what do you think about whatever it is? And now more and more, even organizations that used to be pretty innocuous, even organizations that maybe didn't have name recognition, people want to know what your executives think. They want to know what your executives stand for. They want to know what your executives don't stand for. They want to know what you speak up about. They want to know what you don't speak up about. And the whole purpose of this conversation today is to inspire you to think about what is that bigger thing? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why do I come every day and do this thing? Because it's got to be something bigger than the job. It's got to be something bigger than the title. It's got to be something bigger than the office. It's got to be something bigger than the paycheck. Because when the day is done, that's not going to wake you up in the morning. In the day is done, it's got to be something that's bigger than that. And we're trying to figure out what that is. What we do know is that more people are leaving organizations now. Since 2010, separations are up 14%. Largely, largely based on the fact that people are saying, hey, there's something bigger for me than just this job that I'm in. Number two, 86% of millennials think that business success should be measured in terms of more than just the financial performance of an organization. And then finally, number three, the Edelman Trust Barometer reported that people worldwide place 52% trust in businesses to do what is right. I've met um, the woman that runs this Edelman Trust Barometer. She speaks at Davos every year. We've been spending some time talking about her research. Here's one interesting nugget. As all of our systems around us feel like they're breaking down, as all of the things that people put trust and confidence in, as those things have reduced over time, do you know where people are starting to find or look for that solid rock, that trust? The businesses that they work for, the companies that they align with, the name that is on their shirt. More and more now people are saying, I need to know that my employer stands for something that I can believe in, that I feel good about. So employers are saying, who deserves to have my greatness? And you may have heard me say this before. Every one of you are great. You wouldn't be in the seats that you're in. You wouldn't be doing what you're doing if you weren't really good at what you do. Somebody thought that your skills and attributes were amazing, and that's the reason why they want you to be on their team. But I have a question for you. Who deserves to have your greatness? I'm going to ask you to answer four questions to make that decision. Number one, am I proud of the company I work for? Am I proud of the people I work with? Am I proud of the work that I get to do? And am I pleased with the value that I give and get? Notice I didn't say anything about job. Notice I didn't say anything about money. Notice I didn't say anything about brand not equity or anything else like that. Who deserves to have me? Why do you deserve to have me? I know I'm great. So why do you deserve to have me? Is this a company that I believe in, that I want to be part of, that I want to say their name is on my shirt? Are these people that I want to work with every day because I'm going to see them more than I'm going to see my family? And do I believe that I'm going to learn from these people and they're going to inspire me and I'm going to have the opportunity to inspire them? Is this work that I'm doing that makes me feel like I'm contributing something bigger than just going to work every day? What is it that I'm doing and am I proud of the work that I actually get to do every day? And then finally, do they value me? Do they believe in me? Do they trust me? Have I given them something to make them feel like they value me and I value them back? Everybody has a currency equation. What your currency equation is will make you determine whether or not that place deserves to have you. 
I've worked at lots and lots of places, and there are lots of places that will give you another dollar. There are lots of places that will call you something really super important. There are lots of places that will give you a really big office. There are lots of places that will pay for you to fly all over the place, and they won't treat you well. They won't love you. They won't be nice to you. They won't be kind to you. They won't believe in you. They won't trust in you, and they don't deserve to have you. I'm talking to my team members. I'm talking to my practitioners. I'm talking to people just like me who go to work every day with some sense of inspiration for why you do what you do. I need you to plug in to what is that bigger thing. I need you to force your organization to think about what is that bigger thing. Because I need every person in your organization to believe that you deserve to have them. You have to earn them. You have to earn them. And more and more, we are earning them through the actions that we take, the words that we speak, the actions that we don't take, and the things that we don't choose to speak on. Here's some quotes from different people at different organizations. I want to make an impact. We're building a company that people love. You can make a difference by helping to build smarter, more sustainable world. We lead, we invent, we deliver, we use the power of sport to move the world. People are looking for that inspirational thing that is bigger than just the job. I'm fortunate that I work at the NBA. We have a platform. We have a place where we get to go and we speak. And as I said, people want to hear about LeBron. People want to hear about what Adam thinks. We decide not to go to North Carolina because we don't feel we can put on the right kind of event given the circumstances in the local market at the time. We move the needle and we bring the All-Star game back to North Carolina when the needle has moved. We have the first sports league that walks in the Pride Parade and we feel proud of that. We can go back to history to talk about the advocacy that many of our players stood up for and many of the things that our players and our league and all of the folks around the league have stood up for. And yes, it's a great platform to have being the NBA to be able to do that. But mind you, every organization that you work for has a similar platform. And in today's world, the employee value proposition is no longer about money. It's no longer about title. It's no longer about perks. It's no longer about programs. It's not all that stuff. What people want to know now is, do you deserve to have me? Do I want your name on my shirt? When things go wrong, will my leaders get weak knees or not? When there are things going on in the world, whether it's the killing of senseless, uh, the senseless killing of people in inner cities, whether it's misogynistic behavior around the world, whether it's all of the terrible things that we see in our communities, and even sometimes the little inspirational things that we see about young people throughout the world. We want to know, where does my company stand on those issues? Employees want to know, where does my company stand on those issues? People now want to say, I'm proud to say I'm affiliated with an organization that took a stand on this issue. Equally so, people will leave your organization if they feel like the values that you have are not in alignment with the values that they have. And you can give them another dollar, and you can give them a bigger office, and you can call them something really super important. But I'm telling you right now, this generation, and even our generation, is saying, I want to feel proud of the company that I work for. I want to feel proud of the people that I work with. I want to feel proud and inspired in the work that I get to do. And I want to believe that this company values me for something more than what I bring to it every day. So I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to talk to your executives and see if you can get your executives to stand for something bigger. When the whole diversity thing started to come around, right, it was the CEO of PwC not the CEO of the NBA, not the commissioner of the NFL, not Magic Johnson, not some other big name. The CEO of PwC, professional services company, kind of run of the mill. You wouldn't know the guy if he was walking down the street, not a big public figure. 
He's moving the needle on diversity by having the CEO's challenge for diversity and inclusion. And CEOs from all around the world got behind him, got inspired behind him, and now all of these organizations are moving forward because one guy decided I'm gonna stand for something. I'm gonna believe in something and I'm gonna take it and make it mean something. And now a bunch of other companies are running behind him. And now that's what he's known for. Equally so, we see CEOs who don't stand for certain things or who stand for the wrong things or who say the wrong things in public forums and we also see what happens to that company when those CEOs do that. And you can think all around about all the organizations whose senior executives have made statements or have not made statements or have stood up for certain issues or have not stood up for certain issues that have then had an impact on their organization. People who never thought they were public figures are now public figures. Look, my ego is firmly intact. It is still very large. My name is Eric Hutcherson. I am originally from Freehold, New Jersey. Nobody in the world knows or cares who Eric Hutcherson from Freehold, New Jersey is. Everybody knows who the head of HR for the NBA is. And when the head of HR for the NBA says something, it's noteworthy, it's public worthy, it's newsworthy. I'm still Eric from Freehold. The difference is, that name, that brand, that title carries a responsibility with it. Well, mind you, just because it's the NBA and it's a big brand does not mean that it is the only one that carries weight now. Every organization, every executive, almost every employee in your company stands for something and becomes a public figure as soon as they touch social media and decide that they're gonna stand for something. Now, you can either encourage it or you can discourage it. You can either engage people and get their commitment, or you can exercise compliance. And you may or may not get the same level of engagement from your team based on that. But I will challenge you to say, every single one of your organizations now has a platform to stand on. Every single one of your executives now has a voice, a public voice, and a voice that people are listening to. And mind you, any time they press that send button, they are now a public figure and somebody is listening, and somebody is watching, and somebody is paying attention to what they just said, or what they didn't say, or what they just stood for, or what they refused to stand for. We are becoming the stewards of that now. We have to create that message inside our organizations to tell people what we stand for. I used to work at Marsha McLennan companies. Does everybody know who Marsha McLennan is? Marsha McLennan is a professional services firm. I used to work at Putnam Investments that was a subsidiary. I used to work at Mercer. I used to work at Marsh. I worked at Marsh and McLennan corporate office and then I came to the MBA. When I worked at MMC, we were basically an insurance brokerage company. Not quite the NBA. Not quite the same platform, not quite as cachet, didn't really get all the tickets that I get now, but I worked at Marsh and McLennan. Here's what I said to people when I worked at Marsha McLennan. When disaster strikes, people call us. When disaster strikes, people call us. I worked at Marsh. We process billions of dollars of insurance claims. When Hurricane Sandy hit and the roads were out, guess who got the roads rebuilt? Marsh. When the space shuttle goes up, guess who insures the space shuttle? Marsh. When the buses stopped running, guess who got the buses back up and running and the engines going? Marsh. When disaster strikes, people call us. So when I'm talking to young recruits about coming to Marsh and McLennan, I don't go, we're a professional services firm, and boy, we do really cool insurance brokerage stuff. I say, when disaster strikes, people call us. Here's why you come here. You come here because we get people back up and running. We get roads built. We get buildings built. We get people back in and active and productive. We move the economy because when disaster strikes, people call us. That mid-level actuary, yes, they're gonna get a paycheck, and yes, they're gonna have a little tiny office, and yes, they're gonna get called something. When disaster strikes, people call us. That's why you're here. That's the reason why you're here. That's the thing that's gonna move the needle. That's the thing that's gonna wake you up in the morning. That's the thing that when your day is really not going well, that's gonna make you say, there's a bigger reason why I'm here. And I'm here to move the needle. 
Every one of you have that in your organization. You have to figure out what is that equation. You have to figure out what is that message. You have to figure out how do I get my entire company aligned behind a message that says, here's why we do what we do. Because people aren't coming now for the title. And they're not coming now because the office is really cool. And they're not coming because I get really great perks. Those are all table stakes. Now, what do you stand for? What do you believe in? Do you deserve to have me? Who are your leaders? Tell me what your leader's report card is as it relates to what they've stood for on major issues in this world. When things are happening all around us, how do I get the opportunity to plug in? Do you encourage me to plug in? Do you encourage me to speak on issues? Do you want to know my point of view on whatever it is that's happening in the world today? And if so, will you celebrate me for it? That's why people are coming. And mind you, that's also why people are going. If I look at our calling, which four years ago when I joined the NBA, our mission was to be the world's greatest sports league. And I so brazenly and maybe naively said, so what are we gonna do on Tuesday? And that tipped off us thinking about what is our calling? What is that bigger message? Compete with intensity, lead with integrity, and inspire play. Nine words. Nine words define the NBA. Nine words describe what the NBA is. It describes what the NBA stands for. It describes what the NBA believes in. It describes how we make decisions. It describes how we lead. And every presentation I do, I show our calling. Compete with intensity. Be the best that you can be at what you do, whatever you do, to make today better than it was yesterday. Don't compete with your teammates. Don't compete with the person next to you. Don't try to get a promotion in spite of somebody else. Don't try to get a salary increase in spite of the other person. Don't spend somebody else's money that's in their pocket. However much money they make, they deserve to make it. However much money you make, you deserve to make it. Compete with intensity. Be the best that you can be at what you do, whatever you do to make today better than it was yesterday. If I had 30 and 15 and nine, I'm going back for 35, 16, and 10, because there's something that I can do that can make today better than it was yesterday. Are we competing like that every day when we go into our offices? Are we waking up every morning going, I'm going to make today an amazing day? Because yesterday was really good. Today is going to be amazing. Tomorrow is going to be off the charts awesome. Do we really wake up and go to work every day like that? I sure would like to. Lead with integrity, very simple. If you don't have it, you can't work here. Very simple. I walk around the office and I just simply say it. If you don't have integrity, you can't work here. There's no scale of integrity. There's no good integrity days and bad integrity days. There's no today was a high integrity day. Tomorrow, not so much. It doesn't work like that. Either you have it or you don't. Either it's truth or it's not. Either you believe in it or you don't. And either all your systems lean towards integrity or they don't. It's not optional. And when we see behavior that does not stand up to our level of integrity, we take action on it. And that's been an evolution over time. Very important people in your organizations who drive revenue, who drive outcomes. It's very difficult to hold those people accountable to a set of values, even when it's hard. That's why I ask you the question, are you sure your leaders are not gonna get weak knees when it really comes down to it? Anybody can lead with the hammer in their hand. Anybody can lead when they've got the pen. Can you lead when it's inconvenient? Can you lead when it's the wrong person that you have to take action on? Can you lead when you know it's gonna be painful to still have to take the action? That's when you know if you're standing on your values or not. And by the way, everybody in your organization is waiting to see, are they really FOS? Because when the day is done, I'm waiting to see. Because I know, I know we can shoot the week. 
What will we do when it's inconvenient? What will we do when it's the leader who drives revenue? What will we do when it's the really important person in the organization that we otherwise thought we couldn't live without? Mind you, every one of your organizations can stand on its own. Not one of your organizations is dependent on any one individual. I think we lose sight of that sometimes and we think that all of a sudden this person is indispensable. There is no person indispensable. I was given feedback from one of my leaders one day. It hurt a little bit, but it was true. She said, don't fall in love with the company because the company can't love you back. As HR people, we know that to be true. It's the reason why any HR person that says, I want to be in HR because I like people, they don't get the job. Because <laughs> we all know we have to do the gritty stuff. It's what we do. Finally, inspire play. We are a playful organization. We are one that believes in fitness. We are one that believes in sport. We believe that you can build bridges through basketball. We make the world smaller because of our game. We put a ball in young people's hands, and if a ball is in a young person's hands by the age of seven, they're more likely to be a fan and more likely to be a consumer of our game when they're an adult. Yes, that is all true. And yes, I believe in fitness, sort of. Um, used to believe in fitness, and now I'm trying to get back into fitness, but it's sort of. It's directional, you know what I mean. Um, but inspire play. I want people to be joyful. Imagine going to work every day and being joyful. I can't wait to get there. I can't wait for the challenge that they have to offer. I can't wait for what today's day is going to bring because whatever it's gonna be, I'm gonna attack it like I've never done before and I can't wait for tomorrow because I'm gonna make today better than it was yesterday. And it just goes in a loop. Compete with intensity, lead with integrity, and inspire play. Just imagine if every day you could get up and go to work and you had your entire organization moving in one direction going, we are just here to compete, to be better than we were the day before. We let our employees speak out. We have a series of community conversations that we have on any particular topic. We just had one recently. We've had one about the election. We had one about the Pride Parade. We had one about Black Lives Matter. We have employee conversations all the time because we want to hear what people have to say. We've established employee resource teams of all different kinds to let demographics come together, to let communities come together, to let uh, like-minded people come together, to let people of communities of practice come together, because we believe that when we get people together, we feel like we have an inspirational group that will offer better results than just by ourselves. Come on. And we want our players to speak out. I just did a panel this past weekend on athlete activism and how athletes have a platform now like never before. Our athletes always used to speak out. Our guys always used to say what they believed in. You go all the way back to the 68 Olympics. You can go back to Muhammad Ali losing part of his career to stand on a principle and on a value that he believed in. And then you can also go to our four guys standing on stage at the ESPY saying, enough is enough is enough. We could tell them, hey, don't do that. Don't say that. This is your brand. Or we can say, we want you to stand for something. We want you to believe in something. And we want you to inspire the world around something. Let me just tell you, shut up and dribble was a gift. Wherever you sit on the political spectrum, I don't really care where you sit on the political spectrum. For me, shut up and dribble was a gift. Because now, when LeBron James creates his school, and he's getting young people to go through school and giving them bicycles and giving them three meals a day and, 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 and educating their parents to make sure that they get to school every day and giving them free tuition at college if they go to the University of Akron, that is moving the needle, that is moving the world. And when you challenge our players, what do they do? They go compete. And so now we've got guys all over the place that you never see, that you never hear about. Not all the big public stuff, the stuff that is just quiet behind the scenes where they are doing things to move the needle. 
whether it's MBA voices and bringing community activists and bringing first responders and young people in the inner city together to have a conversation with each other. Let's not fight, let's not shoot each other, let's not assume the worst, let's come together and figure out how we can move our communities together. Or let's stand up and think about what are the rights of people who don't have the ability and the voice to be able to exercise their own rights. What are we gonna do to support them? Or having our commissioner stand up and say, hey, it's time for us to think differently about the world and I'm here to try to move it. Or the average individual in our organization that every day goes out and does something in their local community, in their local school. We want everyone to have a voice. We want everyone to believe in something that's inspirational. And I'm telling you, everybody in your organization has that same fire in their own belly. What you need to do is figure out how to tap into that, because that's going to get you your engagement equation. That's going to move engagement in your organization. If you plug into people and say, I care about you as a human being, I care about you into what you care about, I care about you because I value you, you are going to get commitment. If you throw another dollar at them, if you throw a bigger title, if you throw a bigger office, you're going to get compliance. They're gonna do what they have to do in order to get that bigger title or office or salary. If you plug into them as human beings, if you plug into them as inspirational vehicles, if you plug into them as people who are moving the needle in the community, you're gonna get commitment. Your engagement scores will move, your organization will grow, your revenues will drive, and you will be inspired along the way. I have this concept called exponential impact. Even as powerful as your CEOs are, they cannot edict their way to success. Because in the end, they are only as good as the people who follow them. And they are only as good as those who follow them. And so on, and so on, and so on. And I dare you to test it. Think about in your organization, whenever somebody in your senior team said, we are going to do X. And there's that leader who doesn't want to go along with the program. There's that leader who decides, I don't believe in X, whatever it is, and I'm just not going to do that. And all of the people who follow that individual then go, well, is this truth? And then they say, nah, we're not doing that. And then that whole part of the organization doesn't move. I know you've seen it. I've seen it. I worked at Marsha McLennan. We were 55,000 people. You could take a whole, like, 5,000 people and just decide we're not moving. And then the place is standing still. Here's the alternative. A line around a value. A line around a set of values. A line around a set of principles that everybody can get behind and start moving together in the right direction. You will have what we call exponential impact. And as that organization starts to move in a common direction, you will have organizational inertia. Your company will move and people will move with it, and people will integrate into it, and you will get motion and you will get results. But it takes something inspirational beyond just the edict to make that happen. It can't happen just by saying I need, or I have, or I want. It has to be here's why we are doing what we're doing. Here's what this is intended to accomplish, and here's how you are going to have an impact in it. Last video. I recognize that we have a platform that allows us to inspire in different ways. The WNBA is one of those examples, and I like to end on the W because the WNBA is basically a sports league geared towards inspiring and motivating women. 
to bring the young girl along to say that I can do anything in the world. To acknowledge the women who have accomplished all that they've had to accomplish and still can continue to grow and be successful on the other side of it. And to tell the world that not only are we a sports league, but we're also a cause and it's okay to be both. I am so proud of Lisa Borders to decide to leave the NBA to go be the CEO of Time's Up. She's always been a public advocate. She took the WNBA to a new level and then took her higher calling. She took her inspiration and said, I'm gonna go do something bigger. I'm gonna go do something that's gonna move the needle. I'm about to go change the world. So Lisa goes out and becomes the CEO of Time's Up and is gonna move the needle and is probably gonna be able to help the W more from outside of the W than she could have inside of the W. But I know one thing's for sure, she's gonna inspire and she's gonna motivate and she's gonna drive women to success all around the world from the seat she sits in. And we will be proud to say she was ours and that she came through our house and that she's our people and that we value her. Thank you guys very much. I really do appreciate your time.